What's going on, Reef Builders? I'm coming back to you from the one and only Reef Builder Studio to bring you one of the most highly requested videos that we've received in the comments since I started doing videos here at the Reef Builder Studio. Uh, as you can see, this is my saltwater fish aquarium, and there's a lot of familiar fish if you keep freshwater fish, uh, but not usually for saltwater. So, it's well known that mollies, a really common freshwater aquarium fish, can actually be acclimated to seawater. And there's so many fun things about mollies that if you've never had mollies in your saltwater aquarium or reef tank, um, this video is gonna talk all about mollies in a saltwater aquarium. Um, and it's just an awesome, hardy group, lots of different colors. They're cheap, you can get them every single wear. Um, they're live breeders, uh, live bearers, so they give birth a live young that you'll find in the sump. Uh, they eat algae, even certain tough, like nasty algae, especially biofilms that other common saltwater herbivores won't eat. Um, and they come in a whole bunch of different colors. And uh, really, with saltwater fish being so expensive these days, you know, not helped by the COVID era that we're experiencing, this is probably one of the best times there's ever been to kind of dabble and experiment in uh, using and adding mollies to your aquarium. So um, we went to the store earlier today and uh, I realized that we hadn't provided this video for you. So we got a handful of orange and gold dust mollies. Um, these have a little bit of the sailfin trait. Um, so a handful of males, a handful of females. And um, one of the things that people don't really know about, you know, the process of acclimating a freshwater fish to salt water is that you don't have to quarantine because you're not gonna give freshwater parasites to your saltwater fish. So we're gonna put these out here in the tank so you can get a little bit better look at them. So these are just straight from the local fish store. Um, I really like to pick out the most robust and healthy specimens, a little bit more that than the actual coloration itself. Um, because the acclimation process to salt water is, um, is, you know, it's a little rough. It's a little bit tough. Um, it's not just plug and play. Um, one thing that you should know is that there is a little bit of attrition rate when you acclimate the freshwater fish to salt water. And there's no metric, but generally I do expect to lose some. And it's not like in one day, it's usually more kind of a long-term thing. Um, but once that attrition has completed, then you won't have any more issues and the fish that you have, you'll have for a really, really long time. So, um, there's a lot of different ways to acclimate any, any uh, amphidromous fish from freshwater, saltwater, or back. Um, in the past, what I would have done is kept these fish in, let's say, a 20 gallon tank, and every time the water evaporated, I would just top it off with saltwater. But man, that could take weeks and it takes, you know, I have to have another tank set up. Um, some people have, tossed in mollies and not had any issues. Um, you could also probably do it rapidly. Like I'm very certain that if I just cupped seawater into this tank until it was full over a span of an hour or two and then put the fish in, it would be all right. But um, I have developed a method, a technique that is a little bit more in between. It's gonna give the fish a little bit more gentler acclimation. It's automatic and you don't need another tank set up um, for a long time in order to do this. So let me show you basically my acclimation vessel. Um, just because I have this because I do it pretty often. So I just have any old bucket. I've got a small one quarter inch bulkhead outlet and uh, I have this set up basically right here to overflow into the aquarium. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna describe it while I'm doing it. So we're gonna put some fresh water in here to uh, go ahead and fill up the bucket a little bit. So we have a nice large reserve 
of uh, fresh water to kind of soften how much uh, the salinity changes. Gonna go ahead and grab these juicy babies and put them in here gently. There you go, fishies. Almost home. And you see I got the water level pretty much, you know, right at the spout. And what I'm gonna do is just simply take any old line and pop it up here at a higher level and start just a, a gravity siphon. Um, anytime you do this, you really want to secure all your hoses very well. In this case, I can actually kind of jam the hose in place with the lid. So I'm going to start a siphon. And that's way too fast. So what I'm going to do is just kind of turn it down to a little bit faster than kind of drop wise. So that's that'll take a while. That's probably uh, pretty good. And so this is going to take um, this is what I call my overnight acclimation method. Um, so this will probably not be the same salinity as this tank by tomorrow morning, but within about 24 hours, it will be. And as the water fills up, it's simply going to overflow into the sump. So two, two more small details. I've got this uh, uh, pour spout lid right here that I can use to put the drip line into. But also super important, this is a very important step, you guys. Uh, need to put an air stone in there because I have about 10 large medium sized mollies inside and this is not this is not nearly enough aeration so just gonna pop that down in here and uh, so the water is gonna be aerating throughout the night we have a lid so the fish don't jump fish will jump if you give them the chance and uh, then it's just uh, gravity feeding into the bucket all night long and uh, pretty soon should be able to monitor uh, the water level inside and watch it uh, drip out. So we're gonna let this run overnight and uh, come back at it tomorrow to see how the mollies have fared. I have no, uh, no reservations, they will be totally fine. And then we'll discuss a little bit more about the, the nuance of adding mollies to different types of saltwater aquarium setups, as well as some of the things you should know about keeping them in a reef tank versus a fish tank, etc. So um, we're gonna let this roll overnight and we'll see you very soon. Okay, so it's the next day and the bucket, the drip bucket's been going uh, pretty much all night long. I think we're right at about 18 hours right now. And it's just uh, gravity overflowing here into the sump. And I'm gonna use quick and easy salinity measuring tool to see if we're at the same level between the system and the bucket. Probably can go ahead and turn this off. All right, so I am getting about 25 parts per thousand in this tank. 25 parts per thousand also in this tank. So uh, the mollies look good. They are the same salinity in this tank. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer them over and um, then give you a little discussion on some of the things to consider about keeping mollies in a typical saltwater aquarium environment. All right, so you know, I, I built this uh, this particular bucket because I get mollies a lot because I have a lot of tanks, and uh, you know, for the cost of one saltwater fish, you can get usually about five, ten, sometimes twenty mollies, and there's so much diversity to them. Um, really, just keeps me really entertained, and uh, I think I mentioned already that I find a lot of babies in the sumps. So these guys have been, just went from fresh water to salt water and uh, not some bad looking fish if I might say so myself. Let's go ahead and get them into the, uh, the system so we can really enjoy them in their full glory. Well, it's only been a few minutes and as you can see the uh, black gold dust orange mollies whatever this variety is called um, they're already out and about swimming all over the tank and uh, grazing on everything they can find inside the aquarium uh, the surfaces of the aquarium they really are great algae either eaters especially for different types of biofilms and services. But this brings me to another <laughs> interesting point about uh, mollies in a saltwater aquarium is compared to pretty much 
all other fish, they're kind of they're kind of stupid. I mean, they are domesticated. They are usually grown in giant ponds. They've been around people and sometimes aquariums their entire lives. So they don't really have any of the built-in fears that we come to expect from pretty much all saltwater fish. And so they can also serve a really interesting purpose of dither fish. Um, the concept of dither fish is not really well known or discussed in saltwater aquariums because we don't really have them. But in a freshwater tank, freshwater environment, the dither fish are basically um, bold enough to swim around the tank all, all over the place. And that's a signal to other fish um, that it's safe to, to come out. So if you have uh, some shy fish, you'd be actually really surprised what some uh, dither fish in the form of mollies can do um, for your aquarium. So uh, yeah, these fish are actually really, really, really nice batch. Um, but I did want to talk about sur survivability. Um, I don't know why this is, but um, the different strains of mollies don't necessarily uh, perform exactly the same in a saltwater environment. There's two species of mollies, basically a short fin and then the sail fin. And um, you would think that the coastal sail fins that are sometimes found in brackish and marine environments would do the best. But I think the hybrids, um, in my experience, actually do better in a saltwater aquarium environment. Um, but particularly the white ones. The white mollies are the longest lasting that I've had in my aquariums. Um, that's more so than some of these smaller, fancier varieties like the all gold or all orange. Um, and I've tried, that's why this batch is mostly uh, gold and black. Um, also, uh, males, in, in, in freshwater aquarium environments, they don't live as long because they're spending all their time chasing the female. Uh, as you can see in this aquarium, some of them just hit the tank and within one or two minutes, they're trying to breed with some of the females that were in the tank and some of the new females that I had just added. Um, so over a long timeline, you're gonna end up with more females than males. So something to consider if you want uh, to just get females for the benefits. The males are a little showier. They're always gonna have that bigger uh, flashy sail fin, dorsal fin. And um, the fish that really last the longest are the native born saltwater mollies. Um, because in some ways, if, if you find them in your sump, you're only gonna find the ones that have already survived. Um, so, so, I mean, it's kind of logical that the, the fish born in seawater and already kind of weeded out by the saltwater environment um, would do the best. So um, one thing to know is that mollies are not reef fish. They're not reef fish by any means. So if you have a super high energy tank or a lot of stinging corals, um, they're not gonna react well to that. You know, they're not used to uh, living in really high strong flow. So a medium energy reef um, or a saltwater fish tank is gonna be great for them. But if you have a ton of flow, um, they'll do well well for for a while but you know it, sometimes it's just a matter of time before they, they find the intake of the pump um, which is unfortunate but um, yeah this has been a really highly requested video topic for almost two years finally getting around to uh, basically telling you I guess my thoughts on mollies in a saltwater aquarium they are the most inexpensive saltwater fish you can get and uh, if you paid attention throughout this entire video, there's so many fun benefits to mollies that you just can't find in a single fish, in a single saltwater fish at all. So if you have any questions left, go ahead and put those down in the comments down below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. Uh, thanks to tuning in to this video. I hope uh, those of you that have been waiting for this video are extremely satisfied by how it turned out. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.